in case you have uh, have not seen it in the last day or so xbox is making moves and i think i know why and i'll tell you why here in a moment but what these moves are are uh, they are raising the price of game pass and they are adding a new tier so uh clobrail over on x i thought clobrail quit x after the layoffs, but I guess, I guess not. He made this really useful chart that actually is way better than anything I've seen from Xbox about this. So I appreciate that. So what we see here is we have Game Pass Core, Standard, Ultimate, and then PC Game Pass. Game Pass Core is the one for $10 a month, and it is also offered on an annual basis. So they're offering some of these things at heavy, heavy discounts if you do the annual version. But core, you get limited catalog of 25 plus games on console, member deals and discounts, game pass catalog, hundreds of games, you don't get that. Uh, day one game editions, you don't get that. Perks and discounts on game pass library, nope. EA Play and Riot games, nope. Xbox Cloud Gaming, nope. Basically all this is, this is like Xbox Live back in the day. That's basically what this is replacing is uh, is Xbox Live. So it's what you pay if you wanna play online games on your Xbox, pretty simple. Game Pass Standard, five bucks more. It has all that stuff. It also has the Game Pass catalog with hundreds of games. Day one game editions, not on day one, but they're added at a future date. Still not clear when that'll be, if it's like a month after, six months after, a year after. We don't really know. Uh, but they say that, and then they go on. No perks and discounts in the Game Pass library, no EA Play Riot games, no Xbox Cloud Gaming, whatever. Beyond that, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, another $5. This has everything. So you pay 20 bucks a month, you get everything, discounts, EA Play, Xbox Cloud Gaming, day one editions, so you actually get it day one, all that stuff. Then we have PC Game Pass, and PC Game Pass is $12, uh, of course, online multiplayer is free on PC, but it's $12 a month. It does not come with a limited catalog of 25 games on console because it's not a console. Member deals and discounts, Game Pass catalog, the PC library, specifically day one game additions, perks and discounts, EA Play, no Xbox Cloud Gaming though. What's pretty clear about this is that this is a move that's being made in preparation for this fall because what's happening this fall, they are bringing Call of Duty to Game Pass for the first time. And so they're anticipating a new wave of people that will be signing up for the very first time. So they wanna have all of this set for them. And the whole idea, you know, there's an idea in marketing called pricing ladders, which you've probably heard of before, but basically the idea is that you have a cheap option, a better option, and then you have an even better option, usually the premium option, but your goal is to kind of settle people in the middle to premium tiers. So the core option for 10 bucks a month, you're like, wow, 10 bucks a month and I only get online access. That's ridiculous. $10 in 2024 just for online access to video games. Oh, that's a little silly. If I spend just five bucks more, I could get the whole Game Pass catalog. Okay, so I should do that. I should do that. So in that player's mind, they've already disqualified Game Pass core. Already they're not considering this. But then they look at the chart and they see, oh, but not day one. So Call of Duty, I won't get day one. So I need to spend just $5 more and I can get ultimate for 20 bucks a month. And then I get all of that. Okay, that's what I should do. So just in how they set it up, they got you to disqualify the base option. And then with an added feature that's exclusive to the premium tier, they push you there. They just walk you up the ladder little by little. They're not going to try anything like that super aggressively on PC, just because I don't think PC gamers are that, like they're not that captured, you know, like they have Steam, they have other places to get games they don't need uh, to play Xbox's game. Whereas if you have an Xbox, yeah, you are, you are kind of stuck with this lineup. And if you're on Xbox, if you're on a console, um, an Xbox console, yeah, Ultimate makes way more sense than like Game Pass Core, which has almost nothing. But this is what a lot of people are gonna see is they're gonna see the $20 a month offering and they're like, well, I was gonna pay 70 for Call of Duty. So I might as well just do this for 20. I get the game, I get all this other stuff and I'm saving money. 
That's how they always will phrase it. I'm saving money, really. Not realizing that they're going to forget to cancel it. And after just a few months, they've spent just as much as they would have if they just bought the one game they were interested in. And if they go four months, five months, six months, God forbid a year, all of a sudden they've spent way more than they would have otherwise. And it's all gone directly to Xbox. So I'm not surprised at this. We've known that this was coming for a very, very long time. And one of the reasons that they've pushed for this, as Daniel Ahmad has mentioned, is because growth has really stagnated pretty aggressively. It's It's been a bit of a problem. We've talked about how like Xbox was hoping to have like 35, 40 million subscribers by 2030. It doesn't look like they're going to be anywhere close to that. Instead, they are really, really struggling to get new people to sign up. And I think for one, it's game offerings and there hasn't been a consistent drip. If you look at like the PC side of things on console, they're just, I hate to be the guy that points it out, but like there really are just not that many people on Xbox consoles compared to PlayStation or PC. There's just not that many people out there to be signing up for Game Pass. Like it's not like you, it's not like the iPhone where you have billion you know a billion or two billion users of your platform and you just have to capture them you just are like they've pretty much saturated the the whole um xbox console gamer side of things so they're trying to find other ways to do it and that's going to come with like pc game pass and then trying to get people to buy xboxes or sign up for game pass um by other means i think for pc like the only way they're going to see it really growing is if they can, can like if they can get consistency that's for me the biggest problem for xbox right now game pass is without a doubt the best value in all of gaming but the problem is you might get one good game every other year like a really good game you need to get every other year that's just not enough for people to justify si signing up for a 12 dollars a month game pass pc subscription like it just isn't enough for that they need more to justify doing that uh, so because they know they're not getting consistently high quality games coming to game pass they're instead just going to go and buy the game that they're interested in maybe it's hellblade maybe it's starfield whatever they're just going to buy it on steam play it there and not bother signing up for the membership if xbox can get to the point where they do have a very consistent drip of triple a quality games then people will start to justify because they're like, well, I want to play Hellblade 2 and I want to play Starfield and I want to play Indiana Jones and I want to play the new Doom and I want to play this and I want to play that. And they start going through and they're like, wow, I've got like 10 games in the next 18 months that I want to play. I'm going to spend so much money on that or I could just sign up for Game Pass. And so then they sign up for Game Pass. But until you can get that consistency down, there's no reason to do it. Um Nick says COD is perfect in that sense because it's once every year that it's just on people play. Yeah. Well, and that's why I think they're preparing for it in this way because they're anticipating that's going to be one of the big growth factors. And whether it actually converts will be interesting because I just genuinely don't know how Call of Duty gamers will respond to this. Like if they are used to spending 70 bucks every year, do they just do that again out of habit? In which case Xbox still gets the money because it's still an Xbox Studios game. But do they do that or do they sign up for Game Pass? I don't know. But Xbox can do all sorts of stuff where like they can do full screen pop up ads when you log into your Xbox saying sign up for Game Pass to get the new Call of Duty only 20 bucks. Like they can do that because they own the platform. Easy peasy, you know, so they're going to be pushing it real, real hard. So with all this, uh, like Daniel Ahmad says, one factor that influences this move is that Game Pass is not seeing strong growth beyond the current Xbox console install base. Therefore, the goal for current console gamers is to incentivize and then upgrade to the higher priced ultimate tier with day one games and cloud gaming. PC and mobile games or gamers haven't purchased Game Pass at the rate Microsoft expected. And this cohort is where user growth needs to come from, which is why Game Pass PC tier will still have day one games. Yeah, they're trying to push people there. But again, the only way in my view, this actually clicks and you get a lot of people from PC signing up is if you can get that consistent drip of day one games. Until then, you're just like, I'll just buy it on Steam. Because a game like Hellblade 2, if I want to try that, yeah, it's like 40, 50 bucks, but I can just buy it, play it, try it on Steam. If I like it, great. If I don't, I can just return it and get my money back. And 
continue about my day. But I, at least then I don't have to stress about canceling my membership next month to make sure I don't get double charged or this or that, you know. As someone who normally only gives a game 10 to 15 hours unless I love it, Game Pass is a great way to play a lot and be part of conversations. Yeah, I mean, I do think Game Pass for a lot of people is like a dream scenario because you can get a little bitty taste of so many different things that you wouldn't normally try. And I think that's awesome, but they got to figure out a way to make it more sustainable. And that's where they've been struggling so far. But I think, I mean, after that Xbox showcase they did this summer, I think there's a pretty good chance that they, they're on their way. They have a lot of big stuff coming. And if they hit even a few of those out of the park, it will become much, much more viable in the long term, I think. He took my thing.